So I've been out here for about an hour. And the moment I hit record, the neighbor starts a string trimmer. It's just the way things go. All right, question I've been asked a thousand times. Why did Shopsmith drill an inch and a quarter hole in their blade when the standard size is five-eighths of an inch? Interesting question. And uh, there's a lot of answers, but I'm going to give you the real answer in just a moment. Now, one of the answers that you'll hear from Shopsmith folks is that back in 1955-ish, when the Mark V was being introduced, uh, there will, it really was no standard. Yeah, that's not exactly true. If you go look at an old Craftsman catalog, you'll see five-eighths arbors were quite common, but inch and a quarter holes were common on industrial machines. So one of the comments you'll hear is that they followed in the footsteps of the industrial machine, went, went inch and a quarter. Kinda, not exactly the real reason. You'll also hear comments about how, well, there's a lot more bearing surface here against the arbor. If this were spinning like a bearing on the arbor, that might matter, but we, we clamp this in place with an arbor nut. So eh, the bearing surface really isn't, isn't really a factor. Now, when you, when you drill or punch or today with a laser, cut a hole, um, the larger the diameter of the hole, the, the more room you have for any distortion that might happen during that process to, to kind of be leveled out or evened out. That's true. Again, it doesn't seem to be that critical with modern saw blades. So to get the real answer, we'll go to the U.S. patents. Now, this machine was invented by really two fellows, and, and Hans Goldschmidt gets most of the credit because he was the German engineer who developed the original Shopsmith machine, the 10ER, and yes, the 10E as well, uh, back in 1947. But in the early 1950s, the Magna Company, Magna Engineering, hired another engineer who was quite brilliant, and we'll have to do a full rundown on Mr. John Edgmond at some time. But he, along with Hans Goldschmidt, designed the Mark V and a bunch of accessories. And the patent for the saw arbor itself uh, was actually granted in 1960, but applied for in 1957. Now, what's interesting about the patent is it doesn't talk about the need for inch and a quarter hole, but what it talks about is safety. And what were they going for here? And I, by the way, I have two different arbors. I got a bunch of arbors, actually. But two versions of the inch and a quarter arbor. This would have been the original one from the Mark V, what we now know as the Model 500. And here is, well, that nut is loose. Let's bring that down. Here is the arbor for the inch and a quarter blade for the Mark V Model 510 and the current Mark 7. You can see it's a little bit longer, which pulls it away from the headstock a, a hair, making more room for the lower saw guard as we know today. Um, other than that, both of these will hold a saw blade with an inch and a quarter arbor. Now, what was the patent concerned with? I'm going to pull the nut off of this one and we'll pass this through the blade. Passes through the blade and then the nut goes on the back side. This is the side that will go against the headstock. So imagine this. You know, one concern that was raised recently was the blade could come flying off. Well, if that set screw were to come loose, even ever so slightly, uh, it, it can't come off because it wedges on the tapered flat of the spindle. If you're using your lower saw guard, it would also be captured. But another concern is, what if that nut were to become loose? Well, if that nut were to become totally loose, the nut would move towards the headstock, the blade would move towards the headstock, and everything would still be captured on the arbor. Uh, with this design, you never, ever, ever are going to worry about the blade coming off. Also, it's a, it's a left-handed thread. And the reason they did that was if, let's say, you, got, you tighten this, but you didn't tighten it all the way, when the saw blade hits the wood, it would spin that nut back and further tighten it. So the rotation of the blade is going to actually tighten your arbor nut, not loosen it. So really a clever design. So why an inch and a quarter hole? Because we've got to pass all of this business through the blade. And there's no way we could do that with a 5 eighths inch hole. In fact, that hole in that arbor that passes through the blade, that hole is 5 eighths of an inch in diameter.
Now, that doesn't mean you can't run a standard 5 8 inch bore blade on your saw. In fact, back in the earliest days, uh, Shopsmith made a 5 8 molder dado arbor. And you could put a blade on this, but it was a little bit wonky because you would possibly run into the tie bar under the table. That's that cast bar that runs between the front and the back tubes that are supporting your table. Um, especially if you tilt the table and then extend the quill, which you'll need to do if you tilt the table to keep the blade centered in the slot. Now you are absolutely running into the tie bar with this. So what we need is an arbor that has a short blunt face on it, like the standard saw arbor, but for 5 8 inch bore blades. So Shopsmith does today and has for quite a number of years produced just such an arbor. So if I were to take the nut off of this fella, you can see that that has got a 5 8 inch spindle and a nut that when installed is threaded in such a way that once the blade hits the wood, it automatically tightens the nut. So yeah, these have been around for quite a number of years, probably at least 30 some years. This particular version came out when the Sawsmith 2000 table saw from Shopsmith was introduced, and this is the arbor that they continue to make today. Now, what's interesting is that U.S. patent for the saw arbor covered another saw arbor that I don't know ever went into production. The idea was it could be used on a freestanding stationary table saw. Uh, in fact, Magna came out with a freestanding table saw yeah, it used the standard Shopsmith style arbor. So uh, th this the second idea, I don't believe ever went to market. So now you're not locked into a proprietary blade. You can use anybody's 10 inch blades. You might need to buy an additional arbor in order to run a 5 8 inch bore blade. But if you got Shopsmith blades, I don't know why you would bother. Today, the blades sold by Shopsmith, I believe are made by Amana. They're made, they're made in Germany. For a number of years, they were made by Frude and made in Italy. There are some blades available from Shopsmith that have been made in China. And I'm telling you, even those, those are a thin curve carbide tip blade that came out for the Sawsmith 2000 table saw. Those are excellent all-purpose 40 tooth blades. So, uh, you know, you can go on the market, buy all kinds of blades. I've been playing around with um, <laughs> some blades from when actually, and uh, they're made, most of these are made in Vietnam and they're not bad. So I look forward to your questions, comments, and cheap shots. We'll do a follow-up in a couple days to answer those. And in the meantime, make it a great day.